Good morning, everyone. So today we will be seeing about the development of the male and the female reproductive system. Okay. All right. So, so this would be the learning outcomes for today's session. So we will be seeing also comparing how the uh, male and the female reproductive system development. Okay. So they are uh, doing the development. How do they? How do, how do they change, okay? So in the genital system, during the development of the genital tract, you must have read about the external, uh, so you must have read about the excretory system, right? So about the development of uh, the kidneys, okay? So you know where the development of the kidneys do takes place. So in this system, the genital system, okay? So primarily we will be dealing with, with the gonads, Okay, the gonads will be developing from um, the gonads will be developing on the posterior aspect of the embryo. Okay, so in males, you know that it is called as testis, and in females, it is the ovary. Okay, so the gonads, it is a primitive sex gland. Okay, and there will be we'll be seeing about the development of the genital ducts. Okay, that is the mesonephric duct and the paramesonephric duct. And then we will see about the development of the external genitalia. Okay, external genitalia. Okay, so initially, uh, how is it in the indifferent stage? And uh, how does it differentiate into uh, male and uh, female babies? Okay, so we will just cover uh, these three things in separate topics. Okay, so go next. The development of the gonads, development of the genital ducts, and the development of the external genitalia. So we are going to see this in three parts. Okay. So development of gonads, how is it in males, in female? Okay, genital duct in male and female, and external genitalia in male and female. Okay. So it will be easier both for you to compare as well. Okay. So like, what's the difference uh, happening between? The male and female because they are closely related right? so the male and female the human beings apart from the genital system so the rest of the organs are almost same right so apart from the genital system like uh, with the heart lungs okay all the other parts of the body are same okay so we will be just comparing what is the what are the changes which takes place in male gonad and a female gonad genital ducts and the external genitalia <laughs> Okay, so the indifferent gonad stage. So what is this indifferent gonad stage? So during the fifth week, okay, so there is a thickened area of the mesothelium, okay, which develops on the medial side of the mesonephros. And this is called the gonadal ridges or the genital ridges. Okay, the gonadal ridges or the, gonad the genital ridges. Okay, I'll just show you. So this is the gonadal ridge. Okay, so this is this is the mesonephric duct. Okay, and this is the gonad, the brown one. Okay, so that is the gonadal ridge. Okay, it is a mesothelial elevation which is found. Okay, on the medial side of the mesonephros. Okay, so you can see that it is present on the medial side of the mesonephros as well. Okay, so what happens is there will be finger-like epithelial cords which is growing into the underlying mesenchyme, okay? So these are called as gonadal cords, okay? The indifferent gonad will now consist of an external cortex and an internal medulla, okay? If it is XX, that is a female, the cortex will differentiate into ovary and the medulla will regress. If it is XY, <clears throat> the medulla differentiates into testes, and the cortex regresses. Okay, so these are the changes. Okay, now I will just show you the picture. How does the gonadal cords look like? So here you can see this is a cross section. So here you can see the gonadal ridge. Okay, so this is the gonadal ridge. And what happens is this um, the gonadal ridge. So this is the development of the cortex and this is the medulla. Okay, so in females, the in females, 
the cortex develops and the medulla regresses in males the medulla develops and the cortex regresses okay all right <clears throat> all right now before all these things the 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 gap the spermatogonia and the oogonia where do they come from so these are called they develop from the primordial germ cells okay the primordial germ cells so the spermatogonia and the oogonia they develop from the primordial germ cells now where does this primordial germ cells they are located so they are large spherical cells which develop early in the fourth week okay along the endodermal cells of the yolk sac near the origin of the allantois okay so where we will going to see that here okay so here you can see the primordial germ cells so they are developing close to the allantois okay in the yolk sac okay in the yolk sac now what happens after this they migrate from the yolk sac so here you can see that it is migrating from the yolk sac and then it reaches the gonadal ridge or the genital ridge okay so it goes okay along the dorsal mesentery you know the development of git right so here it goes along the dorsal mesentery and then it reaches the gonadal ridge okay so during the folding of the embryo the dorsal part of the yolk sac is incorporated into the embryo you know that during the folding during the cephalocaudal cephalocaudal folding as well as lateral folding what happens the yolk sac is that is how the vitello intestinal duct is formed okay so that we have seen in the development of the gid so the yolk sac is taken a little bit inside okay and thus the primordial germ cells they migrate along the dorsal mesentery of the hind gut to the gonadal ridges okay so they will migrate along the dorsal mesentery that's what i had shown here so they will be migrating along the dorsal mesentery to the genital ridges or the gonadal ridges okay so what happens this is around the fourth to fifth week and the sixth week the primordial germ cells they enter into the underlying mesenchyme and are incorporated into the gonadal cords okay so the primordial germ cells after they arrive to the gen the genital ridge they enter into the mesenchyme okay that is the medulla okay and uh, as well as and get incorporated in the gonadal cords okay the gonadal cords the gonadal cord is an extension which we will be seeing right now okay so here you can see the genital ridges okay this is the dorsal mesentery and here you can see once again this is the cephalocaudal folding the primordial germ cells which are developing in the yolk sac and slowly they are migrating towards the posterior part okay through the dorsal mesentery okay into the genital ridge okay and here you can see the primordial that the small red colored dots these are the primordial germ cells okay so they go towards the uh, gonadal cords okay or primitive sex cords okay so this primitive sex cords are nothing but as uh, extensions from the genital ridges okay so the extension from the cortex towards the medulla okay so the extension from the cortex to the medulla which encloses each one of this primordial germ cells okay which encloses each one of this primordial germ cells okay so these are called as primitive sex cords or uh, gonadal sex cords okay gonadal cords okay any doubts until now all right yes any doubts all right now just make a note apart from this genital ridge parallel to this there is a duct which is called as mesonephric duct and a paramesonephric duct okay you know that the from the mesonephric duct only the the kidneys they develop the initial part of the excretory system they develop from here okay and they get connected in the mesonephric duct just remember this 
okay we will see uh, later on how does it uh, how does it change okay so just remember there is a mesonephric duct and paramesonephric duct which is adjacent to the genital ridge okay now the sex determination so that you know that it's done by the chromosomes okay and you know that the male and the female okay so the female has xx and the male has the xy chromosome okay so before the seventh week both the gonads of both the sexes are almost identical okay so it is quite di in, uh, difficult to differentiate okay uh, even if even if you take uh, the autopsy it will be quite difficult to say say that whether if it is a male or a female because the it's still not determined okay the, it is the they don't get respond towards the hormones okay so before seventh week it is called as indifferent gonads so it is almost the same then what happens is the if there is a y chromosome okay so if there is a y chromosome which is called as uh, uh, the sex determining uh, part of the y chromosome sry gene okay the 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 y gene okay so it has a factor which is called as testes determining factor okay so this is the one which helps in differentiating the male and the female okay so the sex determining region in the y gene okay so that's the one which helps in differentiating the male from the female okay and in the females there is no no y and as a result it goes through the normal like a uh, normal uh, genital like whatever the changes the genital has to take place it will go normally so the changes takes place only when there is a y chromosome okay so the y chromosome the sex determining region of the y chromosome okay which has this factor testis determining factor okay so that's the one which determines okay and helps in the differentiation of the the genital okay the genital tract okay to into male okay suppose if this testis determining factor is uh, if this testis sorry if the testis determining factor is uh, not functioning okay if the testis determining uh, this one is not functioning determining factor is not functioning then what happens even though there is a y chromosome the fetus will develop like a female all right so that we will see it later towards the end we will see like what are all the abnormalities okay so this y chromosome has a testis determining factor okay and this testis determining factor has uh produces some effect on the medulla of the gonadal cords okay they uh, give this just uh, give some signals towards the medulla of the gonadal cords okay and because of this testis determining factors they develop the primordial for the they form the base for the seminiferous tubules okay the seminiferous tubules now in the histology you must have read the seminiferous tubules okay and from the base of the seminiferous tubules is where the spermatogonia will start to develop okay so if there is an absence of y chromosome okay so naturally the gonads will develop into an ovary only okay so they, they will have ovary development of the ovary okay so the type of gonad also different different determines the sexual differentiation of the genital ducts and the external genitalia so once this gonad is changed depending on the testis determining factor there will be changes which takes place in the genital duct as well as the external genitalia okay and the testis determining factor okay helps in production of the testosterone okay which is produced by the fetal testis okay so the fetal testis you know which cells right the leydig cells okay the leydig cells they will be helping in forming the testosterone okay and helps in determining the male uh, maleness of the child okay the primary female sexual differentiation does not depend on hormones okay occurs even if the ovaries are absent so normally 
the child, the, if the, uh, the child, it will be developing into a female, okay, it is only the Y chromosome which helps in differentiating the male, making the child to develop into a male. So if the Y chromosome is not present, then the child will develop, will have features of the female, okay. So it is the Y chromosome which helps in determining the factor, okay. The, for the male to develop, all right? Okay, so now the development of the testis. The testis determining factor will send signals to the gonadal cords, okay? And what happens to this gonadal cords, which is now called as seminiferous cords because of the testis determining factor, okay? So the testis determining factor, the gonadal cords is a common term which is present both in males and females. But now, since we are talking about the development of the testis, which is a man, we are calling it as seminiferous cords. Okay, so this seminiferous cords condense and extend into the medulla of the indifferent gonads, where they branch and anastomose to form the reti testis. Okay, so that we will see it here. So here you can see the gonadal ridge, the gonadal ridge, okay. And here you can see the gonadal cords, okay, which is now called as seminiferous cords, okay. Now this gonadal cords, they surround the primordial journals, the primordial germ cells, excuse me, okay, and they will be extending into the uh, inner portion, okay. Now what happens, this gonadal cords, they will be changing into seminiferous cords, and which in turn develops into seminiferous tubules, okay? And these all join together to form the reti testicles, okay? These reti testicles, and you can see this reti testicles is connected towards the blue color tube. The blue color tube is the one which duct, it is the mesonephric duct, okay? There is also the presence of paramesonephric duct. Also, remember in the earlier, uh, in the just a few minutes back, I told you that in males, the medulla develops and the cortex regresses. Okay, so here you can see the cortex part. Okay, it is regressed. Okay, and there is a thick fibrous sheath which forms, which is called as tunica albuginea. Okay, the thick fibrous protective covering of the testis, which is the tunica albuginea, which develops from the cortex of the gonadal ridge. Okay, and the gonadal cords, okay, so they form the seminiferous tubules. These seminiferous tubules, they will join towards the reti testis and slowly they develop connection towards the mesonephric duct. Okay, so they develop uh, connection towards the mesonephric duct. Okay, a dense layer of fibrous connective tissue, that is the tunica albuginea, separates the testis cords from the surface epithelium. In the fourth month, the testis cord, okay, becomes horseshoe shaped, okay, and extremities are continuous with that of reti testis. Testis cords are now composed of primitive germ cells and sustentacular cells of Sertoli derived from the surface epithelium of the gland, okay. So here you can see the tunica albuginea which is developed and uh, the gonadal cords are transformed into horseshoe shaped testis cords which later on gets transformed into seminiferous tubules okay and um, you, inside this will be the primordial germ cells okay and once this gonadal cords change into seminiferous cords there will be the formation of the sustentacular cells or the sertoli cells okay the sertoli cells they will be forming in the um, seminiferous tubules. Then later on, these seminiferous tubules, they all join together to form the reti testis, which develops connection towards the mesonephric duct. All right, any doubts until now? All right, now we'll go to the next one. Okay, the Leydig cells. So where does this Leydig cells come from? 
the Leydig cells they are derived from the mesenchyme of the genital ridge. Okay, so they develop from the mesenchyme of the genital ridge. Okay, and begin develop shortly after the differentiation of the cords. So after the seminiferous cords are formed, okay, so the mesenchyme they start to develop Leydig cells, and with the help of testis determining factor, the Leydig cell is the one which helps in production of the testosterone. Okay, so the testosterone production starts from the eighth week. Okay, so after the eighth week only the differentiation start to occur. Okay, the genital ridge, okay, and the external genitalia they will slowly change into male. Okay, so that's the testis is able to influence sexual differentiation of the genital ducts and the external genitalia after the production of the testosterone from the late cells by the eighth week. Okay. So this is yet another picture which is take from, uh, taken from Keith Moore. Okay, so here you can see the primordial germ cells which travel along the yolk sac, dorsal mesentery, and then they come towards the gonadal, uh, the gonadal ridges. Okay, and in the gonadal ridges, what happens is if it is a male, <clears throat> the cortex regresses and forms a thick connective tissue, which is the tunica albuginea. The medulla develop into cords, okay? So our gonadal cords, which later on gets transformed into seminiferous tubules, okay? And in this seminiferous tubules, there will be the development of um, the Sertoli cells, okay? They will be enclosing the spermatogonia, okay? The, which then later on uh, develops into uh, primary and secondary spermatocytes, okay? And then they undergo changes to form the sperm, okay? You can see in the intermittent mesenchyme, there will be the development of Leydig cells as well. So the brown colored portion, some of the cells, they will be forming Leydig cells, which helps in the production of testosterone. Now what happens if it is a female, okay? if it's a female. If the Y chromosome is not there, so what happens? Now the medulla starts to develop. Sorry, the cortex starts to develop and the medulla regresses. Okay, so the cortex is getting developed. Okay, and this primordial germ cells, they are attached more towards the cortex rather than the medulla. Okay, and then they will form the female, which we are going to see now. Okay, okay. <clears throat> so the testis cords, they remain solid until puberty. Okay, so after puberty, what happens? The gonadal cords or the seminiferous cords. Okay, so they get transformed into seminiferous tubules. Okay, and uh, these seminiferous tubules, they all join together to form the uh, reti testis. Okay. And these reti testes, they will join together to form the ductile efferentus, okay, which is the Hello, doctor. Hello, doctor. Hello, doctor. Doctor, we are unable to hear you. This, this is a severe lag.
Yeah, sorry, I think it got disconnected. Are you able to hear me now? Yes, doctor, we can hear you now. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, if such issues arises, please stop me, okay? And uh, tell me that it is, if my voice breaks or something, okay, just let me know. Sure, doctor. Yeah, thank you very much. All right. <clears throat> So uh, I think I stopped you here, right? Okay, so this is what happens in females, the cortex develops and the medulla regresses. Okay, and uh, what happens is uh, until puberty, the gonadal cords, they remain solid. Okay, so there are no changes. And what happens after puberty? Okay, once the testosterone, the Leydig cells, they start secreting the, uh, they start uh, giving more amount of uh, testosterone the changes do take place in the seminiferous tubules okay and then they get matured okay to form the spermatocytes okay um, which then later on they transform into sperms okay okay so this happens after, after the action of uh, the um, after puberty Okay, once the testosterone is, uh, the amount of testosterone is more. Okay, so then what happens, this seminiferous tubules, they all join together to form the reti testis. Okay, the reti testis then joins with the ductus efferentis, which forms the, the head of the epididymis. Okay, then the head, body and tail, they all join together. Okay, the, they all, uh, all the tubules, they will come together and then they will form finally form the ductus difference, which is the vas difference. Okay, so all these are developed from the mesonephric duct. Okay, so the reti testis and the mesonephric duct, which is also called as the Wolfian duct. Okay, so they will form the <coughs> vas difference. Okay, the vas difference. All right, now the development of the ovaries. So now what happens in the development of ovaries, the gonadal development occurs very slowly in females. Okay, and what happens, as I said before, the primitive sex cords dissociate into irregular cell clusters. They will not be into gonadal cords. Okay, the primitive sex cords, they dissociate. Whereas in males, they will form uh, perpendicular, uh, sorry, per parallel sex cords. Okay, seminiferous cords. But what happens if it is an XX, then sex cords, they dissociate, okay? And they form irregular cell clusters containing groups of primitive germ cells in the medullary part of the ovary, okay? Later on, the medulla part disappears and they are replaced by the vascular stroma, okay? That forms the ovarian medulla. So in the center, in the medulla, there is only the vascular stroma is present, okay? So finally, the six cards, they get disappeared in the female. So here you can see, so this is what happens in females, the gonadal ridge, okay, the surface epithelium. The six cards are initially present, but then what happens in the medullary part, they start disappearing. <clears throat> okay, the gonadal cards, which is present in the medullary region, they start to disappear and slowly this gonadal cords they also disappear okay and there will be a small portion which surrounds the primordial germ cells okay the primordial germ cells so these gonadal sex cords this uh, they get dissociated and they will be surrounding the primordial germ cells okay so these are the ones which later on form the follicular cells okay the follicular cells Okay, so this follicular cell along with the primordial germ cells that forms the primary oocyte. Okay, now there is no development of the medullary region. The medullary sex cords are absent here in females. Okay, so what happens here? The ductal efferentis, they are also not developed. 
because this region, the medullary cords are not developed, so the ductal aid efferences uh, are not developed, and therefore the mesonephric duct will not get not much developed in females. Sorry, yeah, in females. Okay, in females, the mesonephric duct is not developed. Whereas in males, if you see, okay, in males, if you see, the gonadal six cords are developed. Okay, the six cords are developed, which gets transformed into seminiferous tubules. Okay, and there is this ductal efferentes, which is connected, connecting towards the uh, mesonephric duct. Okay, so this ductal efferentes is the one which forms the reti testis and the epididymis. Okay, and then this mesonephric duct is the one which forms the vas deferens. In females, what happens? The medulla part is not developed. Okay, the medulla part is not developed of the genital ridge. So as a result, the ductal efferentes they are not developed. They don't develop, and as a result, the mesonephric duct is not developed. Okay, all right. <clears throat> So the surface epithelium of the female gonad continues to proliferate, giving rise to second generation cords or the cortical cords. Okay, because only the cortex develops, but not the medulla in the seventh weeks. The cortical cords penetrate into the underlying mesenchym but remain close to the surface, which we have seen it here. Okay, so here they penetrate, but they remain close towards the surface. They do not reach until the medulla. Okay, in the fourth month, the cortical cords split into isolated cell clusters with each surrounding one or more primordial germ cells. So that's what we have seen. So after they surround the primordial germ cells, they split. Okay, each primordial germ cell is surrounded by the cortical cords. Okay, the germ cells develop into Ugonia and the surrounding epithelial cells, okay, which are from the surface epithelium, they form the follicular cells. Okay, they form the follicular cells. All right. So now, in the indifferent gonad stage, because of the Y influence, the testis develops. Okay, and if there is no Y, it develops into an ovary. So what are the changes mainly in the testis? The medullary cords develop, there is no cortical cords, and there is a thick tunica albuginea. Whereas in ovaries, the medullary cords, they degenerate, cortical cords develop, and there is no tunica albuginea. All right? All right, any doubts until now? No, right. doctor, it's clear. Now the next part is the development of the genital duct. Okay, the development of the genital duct. So we have seen the development of the gonads. Now we are going to see the development of the genital duct. The genital duct is basically nothing but the mesonephric and the paramesonephric duct. So there are these two ducts, both in male and females. It is only the only the uh, testis determining factor which helps to differentiate into a male and female. And as a result of this, there will be changes in the genital duct as well, okay? Because there is a change in the gonad, once the change in the gonad takes place, then the genital duct will realize, okay, this is a male, okay? And then they will transform accordingly, okay? And if it is not a female, if it is not a male, then it, uh, it can consider that as a female, and then the ducts, they undergo changes accordingly. So there is this mesonephric duct and paramesonephric duct. The mesonephric is called as Wolfian, and the paramesonephric is called as Mullerian ducts. Okay. So this paramesonephric ducts, they uh, they are located. Why it's called param? Because they are parallel to the mesonephric duct. Okay. Now let's see. I will just show you the picture. Okay. So here you can see. Uh, once after the picture, we will go back there. Okay, so here you can see this is the mesonephric duct. Okay, and this is the ductal efferentes, which is connecting towards the mesonephric duct. Okay, and just parallel to it is the paramesonephric duct. Okay, so here initially there will be the excretory tubules. 
okay, which later on they get, uh, you know, that pro-nephros, mesonephros, metanephros, and all, right? So I'm not going to go into that details, okay? So these are the degenerating parts of the mesonephros, okay? And uh, from the test is the gonadal ridge, there will be ductal efferent test, which is connecting towards the uh, mesonephric duct. Okay, so this is what happens in male. And what happens if it is a female? Okay, the medullary part, they degenerate. The medullary part, they degenerate. And only the surface epithelial part, that is the cortex part, they develop. Okay, and because the medullary part is not developed, the ductal efferentes, they start degenerating. And as a result, the mesonephric uh, duct also start, start degenerating. Okay. The mesonephric duct starts degenerating. Okay. <clears throat> now, what happens here? You can see this is the paramesonephric duct, the blue colored one. Okay, the blue colored one. This, both the blue color, there is two paramesonephric side ducts on each side. They both join together. Okay. Here you can see the two paramesonephric duct, they join together and then they open into the uterovaginal primordium okay they open into the uterovaginal primordium so here also you can see the paramesonephric duct on both sides they open okay they open posteriorly okay through a small opening okay into the uterovaginal primordium okay we will see about this in the development of the external genitalia okay and what happens to the mesonephric duct the mesonephric duct, the pink colored one, they also come together and they also get uh, uh, opening into the uterovaginal uh, primordium. Okay, so uterovaginal primordium. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so the caudal tip of the combined ducts projects into the posterior wall of the urogenital sinus. Okay, so now you know that the urogenital sinus, which is anterior to the hindgut. Okay, so the caudal tip of both the mesonephric and the paramesonephric duct, they open into the posterior wall of the urogenital sinus and they cause a swelling, which is called as paramesonephric or mullerian tuber. Okay, caudally, the two ducts are separated by a septum. Initially, they are separated by a septum but then they later on, they fuse, okay? And in paramesonephric duct, they fuse to form the uterine canal, which we will see, okay? The mesonephric ducts open into the urogenital sinus on either side of the mullerian tubercle, okay? So what happens, it is the mullerian tubercle, okay? The mullerian tubercle, on either side of this mullerian tubercle, the mesonephric ducts open. Okay, the mesonephric ducts open. Okay, so the meso the mullerian the paramesonephric duct they join together and then they produce a swelling in the posterior wall of the urogenital sinus. Okay, so they will be producing a swelling on the posterior wall of the urogenital sinus, which is called as a mullerian tubercle. Okay, and on either side of this mullerian tubercle there will be the formation of the mesonephric ducts. The mesonephric duct, they open. <coughs> you need to remember the uh, prostatic urethra, your normal uh, uh, gross anatomy. So what happens in the gross anatomy? So you know that there will be uh, verumontanum, right? The verumontanum in male, in male, prostatic urethra. Okay, the posterior part of the prostatic urethra, there will be verumontanum, and on either side, there will be the opening of the ejaculatory duct, right? So this is just the mesonephric duct, which opens on either side of the mullerian tubercle. So the verumontanum is nothing but the mullerian tubercle. But what happens in females, the mullerian duct, the paramesonephric duct, okay, so they get united with one another. Okay, they get united with one another, and then they form the uterus. Okay, they form the uterus. Okay, I'll show you the picture here. So here you can see, if it is a testis, 
okay what happens the testes will be secreting a substance which is called as valerian inhibiting substance okay mis okay valerian inhibiting substance okay which is from the sertoli cells okay so this valerian inhibiting substance which is coming from the sertoli cells they will make sure that the paramesonephric duct is not developed in males okay so they suppress the growth of the paramesonephric duct and this hormone you already know testosterone okay the testosterone they will stimulate the mesonephric ducts okay thereby forming the vas deferens and the epididymis okay and they send signals towards the external genitalia so that the external genitalia is changed to that of a male now what happens in females in females there is no mullerian inhibiting substance and as a result the paramesonephric duct is formed okay so paramesonephric duct is formed okay and this paramesonephric duct is the one which gives rise to the uterine tubes uterus okay the upper part of the vagina okay the upper part of the vagina <clears throat> and they also make changes towards the external genitalia to develop that into that of a female all right so this is the changes which takes place in male and female okay so now we are going to see this in detail okay so here you can see the mesonephric ducts okay so here you can see the mesonephric duct is the one which the ductal afferent is they it changes into reti testes and then they form the epididymis okay they then form the head body and tail of the epididymis okay and the rest of the mesonephric duct they get transformed into uh transformed into vas deferens okay they get transformed into vas deferens and they open into the prostatic urethra on either side of the vero montanum okay on either side of, this is the vero montanum okay which is present in the prostatic urethra so the vas deferens they open on either side of the uh, vero montanum okay uh, okay now if you observe closely here you can see some parts they are orange in color okay what are these orange in color these are nothing but the remnants of the paramesonephric duct okay the remnants of the paramesonephric duct so here you can see prostatic utricle okay or utricular prostaticus or prostatic utricle okay so which is present in the vero montanum okay so it's a remnant of the paramesonephric duct and there is appendix of testes okay a small swelling which can be found on the just closer towards the head of the epididymis so that's the appendix of testis so both these structures they are uh, developed from paramesonephric duct okay the remnant of the paramesonephric duct now the mesonephros okay we know the mesonephros they also start degenerating sometimes some of this mesonephros might remain okay and then they form as appendix of epididymis and paradidymis okay paradidymis which is present towards the inferior pole of the testis okay so paradidymis and and the appendix of testis all right <clears throat> so the mesonephros they regress okay so the the mesonephros they regress few excretory tubules okay so that is they, they form the ductal afferentes which later on form the reti testes okay this excretory tubules along the caudal pole of the testes they form the paradidymis okay so
so here you can see this terminal portion okay so this mesonephros is the one which forms the paradidymis and this small portion they form the appendix of epididymis okay the mesonephric duct towards the cranial part they form the appendix of epididymis okay so this mesonephric duct so this is uh, this is mesonephros okay so the mesonephric duct they will be enlarging okay and then they form the vas deferens okay they form the vas deferens okay and you know that the ductal afferent is gets connected towards the the mesonephric duct okay the mesonephric duct then then develop a thick muscular coat okay you know the vas deferens has got a thick muscle muscular tube okay so the region of the ducts between the seminal vesicle it's called as ejaculatory duct and the paramesonephric ducts degenerate except for a small portion which is called as the appendix of testis so appendix of testis it is a remnant from paramesonephric duct paradidymis it's a developed from mesonephros okay same with appendix of epididymis okay it is a remnant of uh, mesonephric uh, ductules okay and uh, the prostatic utricle it is a developing from the developing from uh, what is that the paramesonephric duct okay it's a remnant of the paramesonephric duct all right so this is what happens in males okay and then how does the development of the prostate and the seminal vesicle takes place okay you know this tube right the mesonephric duct now there will be an extension from this tube which forms the seminal vesicle okay so they form the seminal vesicle so the lateral outgrowth from the mesonephric duct gives rise to the <coughs> seminal vesicle now what happens to the prostate how do they develop you know the prostatic urethra right so from the prostatic urethra there will be they will be sending multiple outgrowths okay which later on they unite together to form the prostate okay so multiple endodermal outgrowths arising from the prostatic part of the urethra okay you can see that from the prostatic urethra there will be a large number of ingrowth into the mesenchyme okay so that by forming the prostate similarly the bulbo urethral gland okay the bulbo urethral gland which is present next to the uh, which develops in the membranous urethra so they also develop from the spongy part of the urethra as an outgrowth from the spongy part of the urethra okay so basically all the others are extensions from the uh, from the respective parts so extension from the mesonephric duct they form the seminal vesicle okay and the extension from the um, prostatic part of the urethra they form the prostate okay and the extension from the membranous urethra so they form the bulbo urethral glands okay now what happens in females in females the paramesonephric duct develops okay not the mesonephric duct so in males the mesonephric duct develops whereas in females the paramesonephric duct develops okay so initially three parts can be recognized in the paramesonephric duct the cranial part which forms the uterine tube the horizontal part okay which is also forming the uterine tube and later the the vertical caudal part okay so which fuses with the opposite side and then they form the uterine canal let's see through the picture so here you can see the medulla is not developed the surface epithelium they are changing into the ovary so as a result the mesonephric duct they start to de degenerate okay and what happens is the mesonephric the paramesonephric duct towards the cranial side okay as well as in the middle side they will form the uh, uterine tube and what happens as it approach towards the midline the two parts okay the two parts 
uh, of the paramecenephric duct they unite to one another okay and they form the uterine they form the uterine canal okay so they form the uterine canal okay <clears throat> All right. Now let us see the same differences here. Here, as we said before, okay. So the paramesonephric duct is developed. The mesonephric duct changes into remnants. So what are the remnants of mesonephric duct? Here you can see the mesonephric ductules, okay, and the duct, okay. So they can form. They they form the epiphron, okay, and here parufron. Okay, so epiphron and parufron, which are nothing but <coughs> the mesonephric ductules remnant. Okay, the remnant of the mesonephric ducts. Okay, <coughs> all right. Any doubts until now? Any doubts until now? All right. Do you need a break? Do you need a break? Okay, I think I should ask as for a break. Uh, so uh, we will meet at after five minutes. Okay, just be inside the room. Okay, and.